often we tend to ask, why me? Why did this happen to me, God? Today's guest is living proof that no matter what happens, God can still use us for his good. Welcome on set, Ashley. Thank you. Of course. I actually interviewed her mom a few years back, and she came on and shared her testimony of how God has moved and worked in her life. And I'm so excited to have Ashley here on set with us today. So am I. I'm, I was a little nervous, but I'm very excited to share my story. Yeah, your story is going to impact so many people, and I'm excited for you to share it. You actually went live with me on TikTok a few days ago, and that's how we decided that you should be on set with us. <laughs> I was, I was, didn't know if you had knew who I was, but then you're like, you already knew. Yeah, how, how long have you known God? Well, when I was about like seven or eight, my mm -hmm. parents, like my mom would always tell us that um, we were Christian and like how, you know, like talk about it and... Then my parents got in arguments and stuff, and they would fight. And I had the friend. At, I had a friend at school that would. Her, her name's Ava, and she would basically tell me that everything's gonna be okay. That God is with us, and like nobody would really talk about that. And then. I met her and she would just tell me that everything's okay and yeah. That sounds a lot like my story as well. I was in elementary school, middle school, my parents fought all the time. And it was this one girl named Monique in elementary school and I'd go to her house on the weekends and her parents would invite me to church and that's how I came to know Christ. Yeah. And, and since then, do you still keep in contact with Ava? Yeah, a little bit. We haven't talked as much, but yeah. A little bit. So do you feel like God used your friend to bring you closer to him? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. And how about you? Do you feel like you were able to share God's love and God's light with your, your parents during that time where they were arguing? Yes. My parents used to argue all the time, and my sister would have me sit in the room and not go out because um, when you're in the middle of it, they kind of just, like, take it out on you. So my sister would tell me to just, like, stay in the room, like color and all that other stuff. But there was one day when it was a Sunday and I went in my parents' room and I was like, why don't we go to church anymore? And my dad's like, let's go. And ever since then, we've been going to church every Sunday and been super close to God. And it's pretty well, incredible. God definitely used you and your family and that's beautiful. Yeah. Do you, did you ever feel like it was your fault that your parents were, were fighting? Yes. I thought that if I cleaned all the dishes and if I forgot, then I would be the reason why they fought. Or that if I didn't do what I was told or, I don't know, like I just like would think it was me. Like, I used to think that if I went to bed like five or a couple minutes before my mom told me to go to bed, I would, <laughs> I would get yelled at or something. Not yelled at, but like they would fight. I think it's just you respected your parents. You wanted to make sure that you were doing everything that you could do yeah. to be the best daughter you could be. Yeah. And it's clear that you did. Yeah. Ever since you started going to church, how has your family dynamic changed? It's crazy. It is really crazy how it changed because my dad wasn't a really believer in it really in God but my mom always has been um, but my dad really wouldn't want to talk about God or anything and then we started going to church and more and more has progressed like he's been closer to God and it's really crazy how it can change someone so quick like with the snap of a finger like it's crazy. Do you feel like your parents treat you differently and treat each other differently now? Yes it's way better there hasn't been an argument since we first started going to church, like, it's been crazy. That's amazing. And what are you doing personally to grow closer to God? Um, uh, I go to youth group, and they will give you a Bible verse, and I will practice that Bible verse, and I pray about the Bible verse, and, um, like, I don't know, I, like, talk to God a lot that makes sense. That totally makes sense. That's the best way to grow in your faith. And you actually said you have a favorite Bible verse. Yes. 
Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. That's a gift to know a Bible verse by heart. Like, I know my favorite Bible verses, but it is hard to say it on command like that. So I you go, girl. It, I learned it the first day I found the Bible verse. Wow. You need to have it painted on your wall or something. I, I don't have it painted on my wall, but I have, I have a little printed picture because I didn't know where to find it. But. Yeah, and you have a Jer uh, Joshua 1-5 on your shirt, yes, too. Indeed. I know. I, I love wearing stuff with Bible verses on it. It's so much yeah. fun. What's it like being a teenager right now, dealing with pressures of society, of everything that teenagers want you to do, but also knowing that you want to live a life glorifying to God? Yeah, it's, it's a little rough, but if someone has something negative to say or just like pick on me, um, I just ignore it. And if the, what I tell people is if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Like I used to get bullied really bad when I was younger and people would just like tell me how I'm a horrible person and that I'm weird for believing in God. And I'm like, no, not really. You should know how amazing he is. Like really, it's, it's, it's amazing. Once you start understanding God's love for you and who he says you are, everything changes. Yeah, it really does. Um, how do you feel your self-confidence has changed of how you see yourself? My self-confidence when I was about in like fourth grade through sixth grade was like down here. Mm -hmm. And then ever since my, uh, my journey has happened, I've been like way up here. Yeah. Like my self-confidence went from there to there. It's crazy how much it can change. Absolutely. You know, when you become a Christian, Jesus never promises us that life will be perfect. Yeah. At all. Yeah. But he does promise to never leave us or forsake us. And that's exactly what has happened in your story. Everything hasn't always been perfect or easy. Yeah. But your faith has always been with you. Yeah. And you recently went through some pretty difficult times. Can you tell us about your health situation? Okay. Um... So basically it all started when I was going to go get a 7th grade shot, only one, because my homeschooling program said that if I wanted to do classes there, then I would have to get this shot. And my mom didn't like the shots. She didn't, like before she was like okay with the shots, but she didn't want any other shots. Like my parents have been talking about this since we were born. They don't like the HPV shot and the DTaP, I'm pretty sure, and one other one, but basically, so I was in the doctor's office, they called me back, and it was a new doctor, and there was a new doctor and a nurse, and so basically how it happened, she's like, okay, so what shots are you wanting to get, and my mom said the one seventh grade shot, and she kept saying, like, you're you need to get the, these other shots, like I'm not letting you leave until you get them. So the nurse blocked the door and said, you're not getting these shots until you leave, and, or you're not leaving until you get the shots. And my mom kept like, my mom's like really normally like okay with like little things. She doesn't like to argue like right straight forward to it. Like if someone keeps like pushing it, and she'll get a little frustrated, but she never normally yells, but this is the first time I've ever seen her like yell at a nurse. Um, and because they kept saying like, you're getting the shot, like it can prevent cancer and everything. My mom already knew that if I got the shot, I was gonna have a reaction because her side of the family um, is like allergic to a lot of things. Oh wow, and yeah. what happened to you after you got the shot? So I had a really bad reaction to it the lady said that, um, my mom said no, she like kept saying no, and I said excuse me, like I don't mean to be mean, but my mom said no, so if she says no, I'm not getting the shot, like you can't force me to get this shot. And they said, you need to get the shot, and so the lady said fine, I'm not gonna let you get the shot, my mom never said yes. So the lady came in with all four shots, and my mom goes, what is this, like, my, I only asked for this one shot, and I just argued with you for like an hour and it was ridiculous and the lady bring in the four shots and just gave them to me and immediately I passed out and wow. I had a heart attack and a seizure back to back and you're only 13 yes wow. 
Well, not many people will go through that type of situation. I'm really sorry that you did, but um, there's been a lot of good that has actually come out of it, right? You see, said that you're working on a book. You're able to inspire other people who also go through these situations. Yes. Um, it's pretty crazy um, how someone telling you can, or someone forcing something on you and it can change so quick. Like, you wouldn't think that a shot could, like, hurt you. Mm -hmm. Like, some people don't. Like, it's crazy that different people have different reactions and unfortunately you were one of those people who had a terrible reaction. How did your life shift from being a healthy teenager to what it turned into being for months? So, basically, we went to a doctor uh, in, um, like, um, we went to like a specialist yeah, or something. Yeah, we went to like another doctor's and the next day, and they basically so they don't aren't like disagreeant with the shot, so they agree with it and say they think it's amazing. And in reality, it's really not. And we went there and they told us that it was just a little cold and that I was gonna be fine and it's normal that the side effects happen from it and it's just normal. And so they, the person, I got an IV there for fluids. The guy that did it didn't, wasn't really experienced and they went to go give me the IV and he had to poke me like six times and I was on, ben they gave me Benadryl. Mm. And I'm allergic to Benadryl. So I had like another reaction to it, oh, no. which was really weird. Um, I started feeling like super loopy, like Benadryl can do that sometimes, but I was like really loopy and mm -hmm. I like felt like I was like really, really sick. How are you able to keep your faith during this whole time? Because you were somebody who you went to church and, and you believed and you were going through a difficult time. So how did you keep your focus on God during that time? Um, I just kept praying that everything was going to be okay because my mom started talking to a scientist guy. Um, thank God really for that because if it weren't for him I wouldn't be where I am right now. Mm. Like it is really crazy because um, he told us that I needed to go on a diet that is um, no histamine and so I lived off of like applesauce that was had to be like sugar. I couldn't have gluten. I couldn't have anything with added sugar in it. I couldn't have anything with um, wheat in it. I couldn't have like the peels like on grapes. I couldn't have anything like that. So um, I lived off of chi chi seeds? Chai 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 seeds. Okay. Chai seeds and applesauce. That's what I ate for about two weeks. Do you know Chick-fil-A? No, no in and out. <gasps> That's I had a, a seizure from in and out. Oh, I you have been through so much. I'm so sorry. Okay. I just want to give you a big hug if it wasn't no. Corona. Air hug. <laughs> you were already wearing masks before Corona. So what yes. was that? What was that like? So you're already kind of like used to being safe. Yeah. So basically the scientist um, told us that I should wear a mask to prevent like any other reactions because since we're working on our house, we are remodeling it. And since we're working on it, the dust and stuff could oh. make me have a reaction and set off my, uh, I don't You're like immune my, system? Yeah, my immune system. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a really bad immune system during the time um, because it, the shot triggered my immune system and made my immune system bad. And so he told us that I needed to start wearing a mask around and one that had like six layers so I could hardly breathe in it. It had Girl. filters. But you could have it on for like, 10 minutes and you would take it off and the air smelled bad, if that makes any sense. Like it's like works really Crazy. well. Crazy. So, so like months later, coronavirus happened, you're like, I'm used to wearing a mask. Yeah, the masks <laughs> now were like so light to me. I'm like, everybody's like, I can't breathe in this. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, everything happens for a reason. You said you're working on a book. What's going to be in that book? I'm not really sure yet. We just like started thinking about making a book. So um, my guess is just like the story and how I was before everything happened. And from being to like a regular teenager, like to being a kid that couldn't walk anymore 
that I would struggle walking and you couldn't keep anything down. You weren't able I, to. Yeah, I couldn't nothing. keep anything down. And if I ate something wrong, I would have a reaction. Mm -hmm. I would get these polka dots that almost look like chicken pox mm -hmm. that went all the way up my arm, and you could touch them. And if you touch them, they would turn white. So my mom was confused about that. But yeah. my hands normally get like rashes, and when I first got the shots, I got a rea or like a rash all around my lips, mm -hmm. my face, everything. Did you ever ask why me, God? Why is this happening to yes, me? Yes, I did. I thought, I thought it was all my fault. Like I was like, why me? Like, why has this happened? And then my mom came in my room and heard me praying, and she goes, "Everything happens for a reason. You just gotta keep going." And I know it's hard right now, um, but you can do this. You just gotta keep praying and believing that you'll be okay. Is it? Is it mind blowing looking back where you were? To I, I mean, months ago we wouldn't have pictured you even being able to walk here and sit down right now. Yeah, I would probably have to be in a wheelchair. Like I went to Disneyland in a wheelchair. Wow, it's. it's Can you even wrap your head around that? How you went from that to where you are now? It's it's, it's, it's a miracle. It really is. Yes, and, and it's beautiful to see. Yeah, it's really crazy because. I went from like losing hair all the time, uh, having seizures, not being able to eat anything. I couldn't, like when my family would eat pizza or something, I couldn't eat that. So I would have, my mom would make me um, meal preps. So I would be able to eat those. And there was a moment where my whole family's like, let's eat what Ashley eats. Yeah. And that was only for a day, and then everybody's like, I can't do this. <laughs> What was it like seeing your family do everything they could possibly do to help you while you were going through that? I almost felt like I was wasting their time. So I would pray to God and I would just be like, help me out and so I can do some things on my own that I don't have to have someone stay. Did you feel like a burden? Yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, I did a little bit. Um, and what what do you want to say to your your parents? Because I know they're gonna they're gonna go back and watch this. What do you want to say to them? Thank you for helping me through the hardest. And oh, I get emotional. <laughs> um, when I was on my deathbed, they told me that. Or they didn't tell me, but they told my mom that I would have like only a little bit longer. And my sister asked my mom, "Is she gonna die?" And my mom said, "We don't know yet," which is really hard for my sister to hear and for a lot, which is like it's like really hard. And my dad told me like, "No," um, he said. I was in my wheelchair and I had like wheeled myself out to the living room and I went to go sit on the couch and I like, I like think I like fell on the floor or something. My dad helped me and I was like, dad, when is this going to get better? Like, am I going to be okay? He goes, you just got to think positive. Like, put your head up, think positive. You got this. And uh, my dad always used to call me Cupcake when I was little and he's like, you got this, Cupcake. And it was, I don't know, it's just like hard to see my parents see me like, see me like that, like, I don't know. Yeah, you've been through so much in such a short amount of time, and I'm so excited to see how everything that has happened to you is going to inspire people all around the world. Yeah. I'm so excited to hear that. Um, and before we sat down, you actually mentioned that somebody asked you to do like a speaking tour. Can you tell me a little bit more about oh, that? Yes, um, so we're the scientist guy we're talking to told me that I would probably be going on tour because it's so crazy that I went from not being able to walk, not being able to do what I used to love. I used to do cartwheels, back handsprings, everything, and then I went from picking out a wheelchair um, and going from that to this mm -hmm. is really crazy. So, did anybody start treating you differently when all of that happened? Like, did your friends stop talking to you, or did people treat you differently when you were going through that? Yes, I would get text messages from uh, so many people because there was 
um, everybody saw my mom's post, their parents saw it, and every, there was a huge rumor that I was dead. And everybody's asking me, are you dying? And I was like, no, like, I'm not dying. Um, and they would, they would say like, I heard you have liver failure, and I was like, yeah, I do. I have liver failure, but I'm, I'm not dying. Hmm. That must have been so hard. Were, were you 12 at the time, or were you, were you 13 when this happened? Uh, I was 13. 13? Uh, no, I, I was like... 12 turned 13? 12 turned, yeah. So at, at age 12 years old, you the thought crossing your mind was that this might be my last year. Yeah, I thought because um, I would lay in my bed and literally cry all night long, being so worried, like, what's going to happen? And um, I would just, like, be so upset as, like... God, are you done with me? And um, actually what like made me be brave and think more is I saw a TikTok that said, if, if you woke up this morning, God's not done with you. And I think it was actually one of your TikToks maybe. <laughs> I think it was, I did that. I said if, um, if your heart is still beating, you still have a purpose. Oh yeah. No matter what is happening. It was if you, you woke up today, you still have a purpose. Yeah. And God was not done with you. Nope. I mean, look where you are right now. Yes. What advice do you have for people who are going through those difficult times? Whether they're dealing with their parents fight at home, whether they are parents fighting at home, whether they're dealing with health issues, them being that person or even somebody they know. What advice do you have for somebody going through those hard times? Don't give up and if your parents are fighting or you're getting bullied, just stick your head up and trust in God that everything will be okay. You just gotta pray about it. And if your family's not religious and you wanna be closer with God, then be closer with God. Like, I think it's, it's amazing how things can switch so quick. You are living proof that no matter what you go through, there's good that can come from it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a lot of good that can come from what happened to me, and there is. You must have such a different perspective on life now, though, because not everybody gets to go through that situation where they get so close to death and then they, you know, get like a second chance. You, you, you were able to have that experience at a young age. What have you learned from that? Um, that's, I've learned, like, from being, like, not thinking about like, I would like not pray at night if that makes any sense. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't pray at night ever. And I went from being to like happy, not thinking about anything, going to sleep at night perfectly fine, to going to bed at like four in the morning mm -hmm. and praying for like an hour and just being so worried about things. And I've learned to be way more grateful in what you have and what God gave you. Mm -hmm. Because even if there are horrible things happening, you still have a breath of life, and that's something to be thankful for. Yeah. Because you still have time, and you still had time to, you know, love on your family and friends and to be a light in this world as you're called to be. Yes. What do you hope comes from all of this? So I know that you want to write a book. I know that you want to possibly go on a speaking tour. What else do you hope comes from all of this? Um... I hope that from, I think from tour you can raise money and I want to um, set up a fundraiser for people that are dealing with this and that can't, that have to go to a special doctor that doesn't get covered by insurance hmm. and if their parents can't afford it then I want to spread that awareness. And Your parents were able to make a GoFundMe, right? I think, I yes. think they did, right? I think we have, like, our goal is 10000 Uh huh. I think we have, like, 2700 right now. I believe, I, I remember doing something with that. So I'm glad that you mentioned fundraising because I don't think that's something many people think of. Yeah. And I want to, like, make sure anybody that's going through what I'm going through can like feel like they know that they will be okay. Like, and that they're not alone. Yeah, they're not alone. Yes, that too. Like, I thought I was alone the whole time, 
even if my mom was like helping me or taking me on walks with my mask on in my wheelchair. Like, just don't give up. Don't stop fighting. And most of all, don't lose your faith. Because at that moment, I wasn't really close to God. And then I had a seizure and I saw heaven. What? Yeah, it's crazy. I saw heaven and my mom didn't really talk about miscarriages, really. And I didn't, she would, she told me, I think one time that she lost a, a couple, which is really sad. And I didn't know anything. And I just remember looking at myself. So last thing I remember in my seizure was my grandpa trying to wake me up. And I saw a bright light. And I saw it. I saw like the gates of heaven and I saw basically like God standing like in front of the gate sort of. The, the gate was closed and these beautiful stairs going up to it and I looked behind me and there was stairs going down and I saw hell and I saw people on fire and they were screaming and they had their hands coming out of the fence. They were, they were screaming so loud and then I look so like it went from like say you split this table in half, this side is like all bad. Like people screaming, crying, reaching their hands out. The, like, I couldn't even tell what they looked like because they were on fire. And you look mm -hmm. over here, you went from hearing to screaming to turning and birds chirping. It's, it's crazy. Um, well, Ashley, thank you so much for being vulnerable and being so brave and willing to share your testimony. I hope that millions of people get to hear your story and I know that it will teach, heal, or inspire those people who get to listen. Um, if anybody wants to learn more about Ashley's story or things that she's been through or want to help um, fundraise with her, please reach out to me on Instagram, TikTok, ShastaJourney.com. I'd love to get you connected with Ashley and her family. Um, I know that there are great things that can come from this and you are a blessing. I'm so blessed that you are here with us today, that you are alive, that you're able to walk, that you have a story that you're able to share. And if you want to be somebody who can also share your story, please do. Go to ShastasJourney.com. Thank you so much for being a part of this amazing journey and we are so blessed by every single story um, that is shared on this show. Thank you and God bless.